Tonight at 11, it's been one week since Helene tore through the Carolinas. We've never had anything of this destruction um, ever. Tonight, the Carolinas begin to rebuild. The community has responded in a great way. As thousands scrambled to get the essentials swept away one week ago. It's just what you do for your, your people. These are your people. Tonight, the around the clock efforts to save lives and rebuild the Carolinas. I don't think there's a word to describe it. I don't know how long this is going to take. I'm Nick Sturdivant. The news at 11 starts right now. News that impacts you. You're watching WCNC Charlotte News at 11. And one week ago today, Helene made landfall in Florida as a massive hurricane. Tonight, one week later, the recovery process is still in the early stages. Western North Carolina was hit hard. Entire towns are now buried under mud and debris. And as we have every night this week, we begin with three things you need to know. Tonight, Helene has claimed at least 223 lives here in the U.S. Hundreds more are still missing. Power is still out for 390,000 in the Carolinas. Crews say that number is expected to continue to go down this weekend. And tonight, the IRS is offering tax relief for those impacted. May 1st is now the deadline for anything tax related here in the Carolinas. And tonight, we're taking a closer look at the efforts being done to restore basic needs for those impacted by Helene. And we're also hearing from those that are still finding ways to get back tonight. WCNC Charlotte's Miles Harris is in studio with more on what's being done. Hey, Miles. Yeah, Nick, the support coming from all over during this difficult and challenging time. Nick. Yes, yeah, so great to see the community come together to support those in Western North Carolina. All right, thanks, Miles. Well, now to McDowell County. It's nestled between Black Mountain and Morganton, but the unassuming county is also home to a plant that manufactures 60% of the IV fluids used across the U.S. Tonight, we learned rain and storm surge did impact that building. And there's no timeline tonight for when operations will be be back up and running. Joseph Leonard spoke to some there struggling to get back on their feet. Damage around North Cove reporting in North Cove. I'm Joseph Leonard. And tonight we've learned there's no timeline to reopen two mines critical to the production of semiconductors. Those are the tiny chips that power everything from smartphones to cars tonight. Quartz producers Sobelco and the Quartz Corps say it is too early to assess when operations will resume. But there is some good news tonight, though. Both companies say they do not expect supply chain disruptions as a result of these closures. Well, in the week since these scenes of rushing waters through the heart of Asheville, radio has become a lifeline in Western North Carolina. WWNC has been broadcasting live 24 seven from Asheville, letting people call in for help, reporting people lost and or found and for telling people where to, to pick up supplies. Mark Stalling hosts the morning show and spoke this week on the impact of the airwaves. People will email us, you know, I'm looking for my grandmother. She's 88 years old. This is her name. This is her address. Here's her phone number, but her phone goes straight to voicemail. Here's our phone number so you can get back in touch with us uh, if you're able to make contact with her. Um, that system has proven to be really a great system. Uh, we sent uh, one of our uh, search and rescue and reunification teams um, a list of 22 people yesterday. And by 7 o'clock last night, he had found 20 of the 22. Asheville and the Biltmore Village area were some of the hardest hit cities in the Carolinas. Tonight, recovery efforts are underway, but it is going to be a long road to recovery. Amber Lake has the latest. Crews are working hard. Reporting in Asheville, I'm Amber Lake. Now for a check of the forecast with meteorologist Brittany Van Voorhees. And Brittany, there are a lot of folks that are going to be headed up to the mountain to help folks up there in need. Will the weather hold up for them? Uh, I think it will, Nick. Now, I guess it's kind of depending on your perspective. It'll be. All right. Thank you, Brittany. Well, tonight, the federal response to the aftermath of Elaine is taking over decision 2024. Here's what former President Donald Trump said today at a town hall event in Fayetteville. This is Katrina. They are doing the worst job on a hurricane than any administration has ever done. And these people don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about it. 
People are saying it's the worst job, and you people know it. A lot of you people know it because you're here. But they've done the worst job. Kamala has done the worst job. And it's really like her because she was put in charge. Here are the facts and figures tonight. According to FEMA, the agency says they have already given more than $45 million to thousands of storm survivors. More than 11 million meals have been distributed. More than 12 and a half million liters of water have been given out. The agency says they've also provided more than 400,000 tarps and 150 generators to storm survivors. The former president is also facing new criticism for a false attack on FEMA's budget. We have more on that and how the budget works inside the WCNC Charlotte mobile app. Well, as rescue crews still search for survivors, posts like these are going viral right here on your screen. They claim to show little girls who survived Hurricane Helene carrying puppies and what appear to be rescue boats. Tonight, we can verify that these are not real images. They were created with generative AI. Reverse image search tools don't show these images being published online and found no reputable news outlets, humanitarian agencies, or rescue teams publishing these images. Our verified team also found some subtle things like missing backgrounds, missing ears and fingernails, and extreme and cartoonish facial expressions. The Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency says disinformation campaigns like this, quote, seek to elicit an emotional reaction that overpowers critical thinking. Now, if you see something you want verified, email us at verify at WCNC.com. Still to come, one week after Helene's initial impact, a major donation by a country music icon to help those impacted by the storm. Plus, we'll take a deep dive into how climate change helped make Helene more intense. And later, a look back at the impact you've made in the community over the last week.